For many years ago in a higher Regency, my prophet stood and prophesied. And yes, said the Lord, it did happen. But I raised up a man that stood against Islam. I raised up a man that stood against the war, against the nations that would come against Israel. Where is that man? I call for that man now, says the Lord. I call for that man again to come onto the scene and take the seat in the White House and be a noble president, says the Lord. Welcome everybody. Uh, first of all, it's been a, a, a long night for me because uh, of what I, I had some insights given to me. And so we're going to go into our, our usual den. Um, we've, called, we've called it a den, but it's actually another prophetic alert. God keeps doing these little things uh, with us, especially this week. So I've had a lot of um, dreams, revelations, um, more than normal. And I think it's because of the activity that's taking place in the White House what's taking place with Israel, what's taking place um, with Saudi Arabia. And I have not watched much of the news, but I'm aware of a few little things. The revelation that I received or the dream that I received was about an attack, a terror attack in the United States of America. Now, most people would say, well, that's pretty obvious. It's not actually because I've had a prophecy that uh, there wouldn't be another 9-11 uh, kind of uh, terror attack. Uh, meaning that not on that scale. So I know that there are so many of you watching all over the world. And we have a live audience, by the way, who are privileged to be in the presence uh, of God in the actual building. And it, it does make a difference. So I encourage you, if you have the opportunity to actually come here, you will notice the difference. It's unbelievable. So, so we're going to go into praise and then hopefully God will expound on what I received it was so overwhelming that when I was in my garden this morning praying, the Spirit of God came on me and uh, it was really overwhelming uh, when I saw specific places and I had to say to the Lord, what do you want me to reveal? What do you want me to say without endangering myself? I'm not exaggerating at all. Um, the way he has been sharing secrets with me and things uh, that are, well, they're pending. Let me put it that way. I think that prayer can make a difference. No, no, I don't think so. I know prayer can make a difference. Yeah. I'm hoping in this instance it does. Yes. You know, Ephesians chapter 6. You know, I, 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 I'm a prayer warrior, so I pray <clears throat> a lot. But when I was, uh, um, Ephesians 6 came to me this morning, where it says that we must come to him with various kinds of prayers, different kinds of prayers. So there are different levels of prayer. I need you, all of you watching me, to join me in praying. When, when we're praising, the, the, you'll always see this happening with me. Something will happen and I'll start praying or proclaiming. What you need to do is join us when that happens, please. Because as I was praying earlier, there's a demonic principality that has entered into the United States air, into the air atmosphere. Uh, it is because... <coughs> Excuse me, it is because of what is happening on the top, on the very top level at the White House and decisions being made right now. Uh, I'd never seen this before, but I, uh, I mean, I didn't see it as clearly as this before. I know we've had visitations and demonic strongholds coming in. I don't like to labor on the point of demons, but they are, we are in a spiritual war. Ephesians clearly tells us that we are in a spiritual war. It also says in Corinthians that we have a we are, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God, the pulling down of strongholds. So what the enemy has to do is he has to get into the head of the people. He has to get, that's why news media is so important and so powerful. They have to get into the mind and the soul of the people. And so it is our prayer that God will break that principality down. For I fear for the people uh, that this um, terror attack will take place. I'll share that with you later on. It's not to put you in fear at all. We are going to move mountains. The Bible says that in the presence of the Lord, listen to this, in the presence of the Lord, mountains melt like wax before the presence of the Lord. There are a variety of mountains that need to, that's right, that need to melt in the United States of America. Not only in America, all over the world, but specifically Israel. And you know, I, I on the way here, I, I overheard these words. as, And this is what it is. 
God said, I've heard the affliction of my people and I will come down to deliver them. Remember that? That's what I was reminded this morning of for his people, Israel. Israel is in a very desperate situation. Its greatest ally, the United States of America, seemingly or seems to be turning its back, or at least the leader of this nation does. And if you know behind the scenes stuff, you'll realize that Israel is in a desperate battle and they want to kill and destroy them, as we know. But I feel that we must enter into time of prayer for Israel and for America and watch the news as God changes things in the next two weeks. You okay with that? Okay, let's go. watching me anyway I don't it doesn't matter where you are whether you're behind a curtain or a wall or a restriction in your nation I know people from the Middle East watch us your freedom can also come I want you to do me a favor sing with me now and sing with Anna I am welcoming you represent your family represent your business your industry your artistry your ministry your spirituality but represent your nation now as you raise your hands and say I we are welcoming you to come in I don't care what veils they have set it doesn't matter to me what veils have been set by law David said in his Psalms shall the throne of iniquity that establishes evil by law have fellowship with you never therefore I say to you those who do have fellowship with the throne of God lift your voices up today and welcome him into your nation welcome him into your family welcome him now he deserves to hear it from you come on I sense light it doesn't matter how untidy I may be but I'm prophesying light I'm prophesying that there is light if there were no light then fear should strike you if there was no refuge then fear should strike you but there is still light in this nation there is still light upon the earth, says the Lord. What do I speak of? The light of my revelation. The light of my word. The light of my presence will cause your mountains to melt as wax before the presence of the Lord. Hear me, says the Lord. There is light and light will protect you. But where are the people and the bearers of light? Where are the bearers of light, says the Lord? As you praise, as you shout, as you pray throughout the earth. I will release more light, says the Lord, and it shall protect your highways and your byways. I will not need you to build walls, says the Lord. I will not need you to build walls. I am built a wall of protection. That Islam and its power shall not corrupt the children of this generation. Yes, radical Islam men have said, we will take your children's minds. God says, I say nay. I say nay. 
This shall not happen to my people, says the Lord. I have heard the affliction of my people, Israel. Once again, I've heard the affliction of my people, Israel. And now I'm raising up a banner, says the Lord. Yes, there is something I showed my prophet. I saw it and I'll tell you what I saw. I saw the Hyatt Regency Hotel. It was not any other hotel. I was in it. I was on the ninth or the tenth floor. And suddenly the, the walls began to crumble down as there was a terror attack. I'm not sure of the city, but I think it could have been Chicago or that region. And the Spirit of the Lord said, even though this shall be something that is only brought upon by those that have been unrighteous, those who have rejected Israel, I told you, Mr. Obama, I told you, if you do not have a captivating love for my Israel, then there shall be death on your streets. There shall be bloodshed in America. But God said, I'm waiting to hear the sound of light. For there shall be bloodshed and there shall be more. But I shall hold back the terror that came on 9-11. For I have said to my prophet, there shall never be another 9-11 in your generation. Therefore, those words shall stand up. But terror shall be applied to those that have wait, wasted my time. Therefore, watch out for God says, even though it shall be a strike, it shall not be successful, says the Lord. For many years ago, in a higher Regency, my prophet stood and prophesied. And yes, said the Lord, it did happen. But I raised up a man that stood against Islam. I raised up a man that stood against the war, against the nations that would come against Israel. Where is that man? I call for that man now, says the Lord. I call for that man again to come onto the scene and take the seat in the White House and be a noble president, says the Lord. Come on. Come to the place of light. Come to the place of light. There is a city of refuge. The city of refuge is my son, Jesus. The city of refuge is Yeshua, the priest who died so that you could be free from your sins. Have I not looked upon this nation and said, you deserve this or that? I have chastised. I have brought upon it things that I never dreamed they would want. But God says, I have looked upon you. And there are righteous men and women that are crying out, releasing light, light everywhere. Raise up your hands with me, everybody throughout the earth that are listening right now. And begin to praise Yeshua. Begin to praise Yeshua. Begin to praise Him and let the light that is in you come forth. Let the light that is in you begin to go and resurrect and destroy the powers of darkness. 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 Set. Destroy the powers of darkness. Set. Destroy the powers of darkness. Destroy the powers of darkness. What you are entering with me today is spiritual warfare. It is untidy. It is sweaty. You lose your voice. But God causes the kingdom of darkness to tremble at the sound of those who desire no perfection but they desire purity those who desire not to be perfect but those who desire to be pure and to speak the poor pure word of life did Jeremiah sit with fine linen did John the Baptist come in with fine royal linen no he had he had to go for into the wilderness and come back to the royal palace what is it where are my prophets today and God says so it shall be again that even as you make proclamation I will disperse light. I will send light to this Washington DC. Come again. I will send light to Washington DC. Pray for me. Please pray for me. I will send light to Washington DC. We at this very hour, ISIS is already planned. It is a plan to take down, to destroy those in political leadership that have stood with Israel they have numbered them they have looked for them I speak of senators I speak of representatives these are the people that they are focusing on now do the news media know about it of course they do but do they know the whereabouts only my prophets can tell you the whereabouts look in your tunnels and look at your trains for God says where you think it's safe it is not safe look in your buses and look into your forms of, of transportation God says where you think it's safe it's not safe but who but the Lord that can that 
who but the Lord can help you who but the Lord can stand up and decide who shall die and who shall live I shall protect Congress I shall protect the Senate and I shall cause righteous decisions to be made in spite of those who sit in the White House and they laugh and they mock God says there shall be no more mockery for I am rising up and I'm coming down to deliver my people says the Lord Now, Lord, you told me to go to the war-torn cities when we started this journey with your warriors. And we started in the city of light, Detroit. Knowing, Lord, that we'd have to carry light to the, to the world. And Lord, I'm going to ask you to help me because I'm not good at appealing with this tremendous word and revelation that is present for America. The land of the brave. The land of the free. We will take light from this nation to the world. You directed me to go to those flags representing these nations. Today we happen to have France where this vicious attack took place at the beginning of it. Knowing that you spoke a word to me when I was in Paris about how they would strike down the beast of the east. I joined my hands and my forces with them next week to do it. I stood with the flag of Israel and held it up because they have been left alone. As I was standing with the flags, they were all held in place by the holders at the bottom. Suddenly the flag of Israel fell out. I had to grab it. And it was such a, a message to me. And I have to hold back my own tears, how I felt. It's like they want the flag thrown to the ground. The nation never to exist again. Well, as far as God is concerned, that will never happen. Because right. that land is his land. It fell out of the, whatever you call that thing. The what? The stand. <laughs> That's, excuse me when I'm prophesying and get into another world. It fell out of the stand. The other two held, even though I pulled the one out. And God said, grab, grab it. Don't let it fall. For I've called you. I'm prophesying myself today. I've called you to hold that nation up. I've called you to hold up their honor. And to take as many people as you can to that land and take as much as you can to free and support them and stand with them and I will and I will as long as I have breath this prophet will prophesy to dead bones there is an army that shall arise a spiritual army of messianic Jews who will scream out his name, Yeshua. Shout it out in joy. Before that great day when they shall say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That is my promise to you, Israel. Am Israel Chai. I pray now, Lord, that you speak to your people and touch them deeply. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Wow. Thank you. you. May be seated. For those watching all over the world, don't do anything. Stand and listen to me or sit. What are you doing? It is a very important that you hear what I have to say. I am not the only person that prophesies and I know it. But God has given me some places, names, addresses, like he used to do when I did with individuals. Whether you believe it or not doesn't make any difference to me. 
it happens and it will continue happening as long as I have breath and strength, which I don't have much of. I've been pouring out for five years, six years, not taken much of a break, taken children from China and adopted them special needs. Now, I'm not asking you to feel sorry for me. I don't work on sympathy. What I do want you to know, though, is when you hear me doing this, it didn't just come out like, oh, you just said that. There was hours and hours of prayer and labor in my God. Tears. Visions in the night that I had to wake myself up because I was suffocating. Because I sensed the presence of a principality that wishes one more time to try and destroy this nation by them dishonoring Israel. And they have. I don't care what protocol says. When a leader of a nation as powerful that is probably the own, only nation in that region that is a democratic nation and God's people is treated with such disgust. It sends a message to the powers and the princes of the air. Look. The accusation came, we have a friend in the White House in my prophecy in 2010. And God said no, but that's not because of a choice made by this present administration. I'm not speaking against them, I'm telling you the facts. God has laid it on my heart. They do not have a friend in the White House because of what God is going to do. The intervention of God will be the protection of the United States of America for a season. Okay? I was in a, in a, um, in a, in a hotel. It was the Hyatt Regency. This will spread out because it will happen. Your prayers can minimize the death it's not going to be like 9 11 but it's going to be such a wake-up call that'll bring the nation to a this is what i saw to a place of the feeling of defeat as if it isn't almost close to that and so voices are rising up to speak against patriots speak against people that have fought for the freedom of this nation voices coming from hollywood to my shame and many other places minimizing and belittling those who have fought do they realize what those veterans go through do they realize how many suicides are taking place we honor our soldiers we honor our military we honor those who are fighting for the freedom in this country and I stand as someone that was born in another nation and I stand to pray every day for this nation. I'm not lying. Every day. Excuse me for getting passionate. Every single day. Every day I call to him, Yeshua, Lord, hold back the hand of the enemy. And it drains you. I promise you. It drains you. It drains me. Because I hear the voices of so many saying, death to America. I'm talking about spiritual people. We know that judgments come and go and there are seasons where God deals with and He has with America and, e and evil that is taking place. Why can I not see it? Why is it that God constantly is on me to pray for the prosperity of this nation? Because there is a season and a time where God wants to use this nation again to touch the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the fact. We don't need death to America coming from the people of this nation. It's already coming from Islam. It's coming from ISIS, Al Qaeda. It's coming from all these different groups. Death to America. Are you deaf? I mean, how can people realize? How can people think that God would take one of the nations of this that He loves so much and let it go to destruction when a, a global awakening and outpouring is about to happen we owe it to our this generation now i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna teach you something for a minute and then i want you to prepare yourself because there's a there's a very powerful presence of god right here and we need to realize my daughter just wrote to me she wants to go to the gym she's supposed to be here not at the gym I'm just kidding. It's not supposed to be on.
I shared with you what I saw. Now, some would, and I will be interrogated, what else did you see? I cannot tell you publicly what I could see. It would be a very dangerous for me. But I saw a lot more, and I will reveal that to the right sources. All I knew, it was a Hyatt Regency Hotel. And it was terif terrifying, because I was there, even though I won't be there. It's the spiritual. How the people are feeling is these walls were caving in as a result of a terror attack but kim you said there wouldn't be another 9 11. 9 11 was one of the worst and most tragic attacks in this nation god said never be on that level ever again well in this generation this next generation he promised it the story is about elisha the prophet and i want you to listen because i'm not trying to put myself as an elisha he was a prophetic voice, obviously in a different capacity in the Old Testament as I am today. Scriptures have been written already. Scriptures do not need to be added to, but prophecy is necessary. This kind of prophecy, is, it comes from insight. And if you remember what I taught you was that in, when you receive insight, it blinds your enemies. I taught that before. And so I'm not going to do that again. But the story is that Elisha finds out where the enemy is going to attack and tells the king of Israel they're going to be in such and such a place and death was prevented, war was prevented. That's my duty. It's not my duty to bring judgment onto a nation or hope that there will be another one so that my prophecy can be fulfilled. I care for the sheep of God. In this nation David when he was given a choice when when the plague was coming throughout Israel 70,000 men had died David was given a choice do you want to fall in the hands of your enemies do you want a drought or a famine for so long or do you want God to deal with you for three days he said please I'd rather fall in your hands but he said this to God he said don't do this to your sheep rather take me and God heard the voice of his son in David thousands of years before he came to the earth. Rather take me than take the sheep. David carried the Christ in him. And so when David said those words, God stopped. And he said, go and offer an offering and the curse will be reversed. You've already heard that, I know. But we are in a moment now when every one of you, this is the time. We are going to bring an offering, but I'm going to give you something to sow into that's going to bless you and your family today. I want each and every one to listen to me. Those that have learned from, the, from when you've been with me that you give and you always reap. But God always does something. You know all that. But Elisha is standing there and he's preventing a deaths. I prayed to God when I came to this nation that you would give me that role. That I would be able to send messages. And it opened up, of course, it happened in uh, President George W. Bush's years. We always had access to the FBI to give them information that God was giving to me. And now I'm getting it again, more than ever. And I'm, I'm sensing what God is about to do in the White House. Raise up someone that is open again to the knowledge of God. No one's perfect, I know. And you're never going to find a perfect president ever. God's preparing me. I'm going, I, I know that something beautiful is going to happen. Anyway, listen. So, Elisha, the entire army, Syrian army, come and surround him. Why? Because he carries insight and that king, not the king of Samaria, not the one, the king of Israel that was being attacked, Elisha was saying the king of Israel, this is where they're going to be. He did that a number of times. The king of, of Syria said, who is doing this? And he said, go and surround him that you may bring him to me. Because we, I want the insight that he has. So I can know the same things. Pretty dangerous, isn't it? Elisha carried insight that an enemy king wanted. The gift doesn't work like that as we know. It's for his people. And so, <coughs> Elisha prayed to, for his servant, for his, his eyes to open up. 
and the servant saw angels and chariots of fire surrounding Elisha. Not surrounding the city, surrounding Elisha. Because the warfare was so intense that he needed angelic hosts to fight for him and protect him. And these are the words he said, those who are with us are greater than those who are against us. Nobody else could see it. That's the thing about the prophetic. When he says something, very few can see it. But when he says something, people begin to see it. And once they begin to see it, acceleration takes place and God is able to protect and move. That's all I'm doing here in the, at the den. Is giving you insight so when you pray in the week, you know what to pray for and how to pray. There, there is a huge demonic pr uh, uh, principality that is that has come into this nation to take away its breath, to take away its life. And yet God has light and a word that will destroy this enemy. People don't realize what's taking place in the spirit. Are you with me you, all over the world? Are you watching? Everybody listening? One more thing. And then we are going to give. <coughs> So, Elisha, Feinstein, who is that? California. So, Elisha, the, the city of Samaria is surrounded by the Syrians because they're in a famine and they cannot go in and out of the city and so they're starving to death. These are all desires of the enemy. And Elisha knows about it. And a woman cuts her son in half and kills her own son to eat. That's how bad it got. When it gets to the place when you take your spiritual sons and you destroy them so you can feed yourself, something's wrong. Is somebody listening to me? It's happening all the time in the church. It happened to me. The economy went haywire. Crazy. They were, they, were, they were selling, well, you know what they were selling. They were selling pigeon dung and a donkey's head for a lot of money. That's where it got. One day Elisha wakes up. He goes to the king of that city. And he says to him, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time. Seven quarts of flour, 13 quarts of barley will sell for 11 grams at the market in the gate of Samaria. How about that? Where are those prophets? Instead of doom and gloom and judgment and constant words of death to a generation that is crying for light. Will this economy change? I say yes. And it's not because of this present administration. It's because of the righteous of the Lord. That's why. There are offerings coming from the earth that are coming towards God. And he is, he is smelling it. It is an aroma to Him. It is a fragrance to God, your offerings. Now listen to this. Elisha prophesies that. It looks ridiculous. In one day, don't be stupid. And the officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord would make the windows in heaven, could this thing yet happen? I'll give you another translation of that. The, the vice president of that nation that received a word from the prophet that said tomorrow, 24 hours from now, everything's going to change. This is what he said, even if the eternal carved out windows in heaven, is this really possible? And Elisha turned to him and said, and please take note, uh, there are 
there are two meanings to what I'm saying today. I'm not just telling a story. In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you will not eat it. You will never enjoy what is about to break upon this nation. The king goes back. The word's been given, by the way. King goes back, goes back into his city, locks the gates. The vice president goes back and locks the gates. Ha! That'll never happen. You know why? Because it's not within our power. Four lepers are outside the gate. They're not allowed into the city. But the word of the Lord is hanging. It is hovering. The word of the Lord is hovering. Nobody's taken it. The king's rejected it. The vice president rege has rejected it. Are you listening to me? It doesn't matter if there are just four sinners that will accept the word. God will still do it for them. And I say to you, I say to you, unfortunately, that's the case many times. The church rejects the word of the Lord because there is no faith and, they, and the word rests upon the lepers. Leprosy represents a sinner and the world. You want to wonder why the world always gets it first. Because they reject, the church rejects its prophets. It rejects the faith of the prophets. It rejects the word of the Lord that comes from the prophets. You know why? Because if they don't have it within their own power to do it, they don't want nothing to do with it. You know this is true. Forgive me if I've taken your time, but I'm telling you right now, you listen to me. Because I have a sure, pure word from God. You heard him today, taking me over, grabbing the flags. You know something's happening. Now, four lepers, they say, why sit we here till we die? He said, if we stay, we're going to die. And if we go towards the promise, we may live. And so they rose at twilight. I love that twilight. They rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians, not to the place of famine, but where the food was. And when they'd come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, there was no one there. No fight, no battle. The spoil is yours. You know why? Because when they started walking towards the enemy's camp, where the word was, where the possession was, where the provision was, they heard the sound of horses in their feet. In other words, the word of the Lord caused four lepers to sound like an army coming towards them and they ran for their lives. Come on! Come on, somebody! And when the lepers came into the outskirts of the camp, they went into a tent and they ate and they drank. And they carried from it silver and gold and clothing and they went and hid them. Then they went to another tent and in the tent they saw silver and gold and food. And they went to another tent and they saw all kinds of stuff. And they said, this is crazy. It's changing as we are in the enemy's camp. I want you to know something. It could change within 24 hours for you. If you really believe that, I want you to jump to your feet and say, yeah! Come on! When I shout, make it louder. Don't take it down when I shout. Say yeah! That's what I'm talking about. How many of you believe that it could change within 24 hours? Listen to me. Let's all, let's all pray together, please. It's been beautiful. Play, some, play G. We're going we're gonna to believe that what God is speaking to you now is going to happen. I just told you about a specific hotel that I was caught up to. I cannot tell you anymore, but I want you to pray with me, okay? Listen to me. Lift your hands. And I want every person to say, Spirit, come as I lift my hands to you. Holy Spirit, come as I lift my praise to you as I lift my hands and as I lift my hands to you and I can feel your spirit come now I want you to do me a favor you are going to give because 
God's given a promise about things changing. It's the word of the Lord. You can either lean your hand on your vice president and say, even if God, or the, even if God could open up the windows of heaven, this will surely not happen. Or you could be like the lepers and say, yes. Your giving, and it's time now, is so important. Listen to me. It changes everything. I want everyone to pray, every person watching me, that you believe for a unique intervention from God and you believe that things could change very, very soon, overnight possibly. I want you to pray with that faith and say, I believe the promise. Say it with me. I believe the promise that God has given to us as a people and as a nation. Speak to me now, Lord. This very minute, I will give you an offering. The best that I've got. It is my message to you that I have faith that you can change everything for me within a very short time. In fact, I'm going to say it as I give. Tomorrow, about this time, things are going to change come on everywhere all over the world say this show me what to give and i'm going to give it to you and believe that as kim speaks your word takes light to france and to europe my offering has sent them there now lord speak to every person that is watching that is being moved right now and as they sow i pray that the fragrance of the offering would come before you and you would begin to move for them and let them stumble into the right tent to get that promise that you gave amen Shout to the Lord and touch you. Touch your people, Lord, as they reach out to you.